Hey everyone, this is Alan from BMW Durham back again with another video. Uh, today, it's kind of a bittersweet day, but I uh, just wanted to make a video on this. So, I've uh, given back my 2022 BMW M240i in Thunder Knight Metallic and I'm picking up my new BMW so I just wanted to make a little video of what that vehicle is all right so this is my 2022 BMW M240i xDrive coupe in Thunder Knight uh, this does have the HEA2 spec package on it but this was a unique car because uh, when H, uh, HEA specs came out you could only get uh, black sapphire metallic alpine white or Brooklyn gray but I lucked out and I got Thunder Knight Metallic because this car, I believe, was originally supposed to be a journalist press car, but BMW Canada gave it to me, or our store, and then I picked it up. Uh, a couple of other things that you could not get in the HEA 2 spec are the Shadowline headlights. So normally you'd have the non-Shadowline headlights that would have the gold accent running through, which I was pleased to not have that. And also, uh, obviously, you've got the Thunder Knight paint, but on the inside, I also got the M illuminated highlighters, which when I first got the car, I was kind of like, well, that's kind of cool, but not really a must. But uh, now that I've had it for 10 months or so, um, I really like it. Now that I've seen the M2 and the M2 has it, uh, it's even more reason to, to like that option. But uh, this is my unplated 2022 M240i. Goodbye M240i. So. Just so you guys can see, we had uh, body colored rear spoiler there. We had shark fin antenna. And if I just open the back here so you guys can just see. So we have a little net on this side, grocery bag hanger, fold down the seats. We have another little net on this side with another grocery bag hanger and a 12 volt plug. And I'm just going to briefly show you some of the things inside as well. All right, so M illuminated highlighters. Now this one, we did have the Vernasca seats with the blue contrast stitching. So we did have little M accented colors on the piping there, which is awesome. And we have uh, aluminum tetragon trim in here and we've got iDrive 7. So there it is with the font and the M240i logo there on the last update. Head up display. I do have the universal garage door opener. And because we've got the uh, Vernoska leather, I do have the little drift knee pad thing over here. And I also had wireless charger with a, a digital key from the communication pad. And there's also a little storage compartment here. And in the back seating area, I've got pockets on the back of each seat and the blue contrast stitching on all the seats there. So. Let me go and show you the other car that I've got and we'll do some comparing. Bye bye. All right, let's go walk over and see my new car. So while I'm walking over there, any guesses as to what it might be? It probably won't surprise you guys, to be honest, but uh, let's go take a look. I've already taken delivery, and uh, I'm going to miss that 2022 M240i. It was a great car, but uh, let's move on and see what financial mistakes I've made next. <laughs> All right, so we're almost at the car. Let me switch the camera around for you guys. All right, so I picked up a 2023 M240i X-Drive Coupe in Thunder Knight Metallic once again. Uh, I got the front plate on. I didn't necessarily want it on, but it's on. And at least now I don't have to, have to really worry about uh, getting pulled over because it is actually required by law in the province I live in, in Canada. But let's go over the car and see uh, what has changed, what hasn't changed. But honestly, I really was not done driving the M240i and I wasn't done driving it in Thunder Knight Metallic. 
I wasn't ready to finish that that part of my life yet so uh, this was a good choice for me it kind of wasn't a hundred percent my choice like I mean I didn't actually build or spec out this car uh, someone else spec'd it out ordered it canceled the order because they picked up a, a, a nice offer on a Julia Quadrifoglio instead so I jumped on it instead of having to wait months and months and months for another car to arrive but I do like the spec there are a couple of things I may have adjusted but it's fine the way it is let me go through some of the details with you and we can do a little bit of discovering together. All right, so first and foremost, this is not an HEA spec. So this one does have the premium package enhanced. It has M Sport Pro and it has a couple other little goodies here. So we do have the Shadowline adaptive LED headlights. So that is exactly the same as what I had last time. And I actually prefer these headlights over the regular LEDs and the non shadow line. So I'm glad that I got them again. I did get the exterior black contents package. So uh, blacked out kidney grill, blacked out lower triangular air ducts on the lower apron. So that is exactly the same as last time. I kind of wish I didn't have a front plate, but it's here already. So what am I going to do? But look at this. This time I got the 50 years of M badging, which does make it feel a little bit more special. I'm happy that I got that option. Still have the nice power dome here. But now look at this. With M Sport Pro. So now I've got the over fenders that widens the car by uh, like an inch. Uh, I've got the 19 inch double spoke 893 M wheels in bicolor uh, with the red uh, M Sport brakes instead of blue and because this is M Sport Pro I have uh, 245s on the front 255s on the rear instead of the 225s that I had on my 7, 791 M's last time uh, I already put the valve stem caps on there because I'm a nerd I love the uh, 50 years of M center caps and I won the tire, uh, tire lottery with the Michelins last time I got the Bridgestones which are still good but these are just better Still have the cerium gray M badging on the side here, which I like just for the fact that uh, some of the 2023 models, namely the 2023 3 Series and the 2023 X7 have now chrome badging. I kind of like the cerium a little bit better. We still have the M wing mirrors in black and we've got black window surrounds and uh, all of that is great. Now we do have the new style antenna, which to me, it looks a lot like a doorstop, whereas the last one looked like a shark fin. So uh, I'm neither here nor there on that, that little detail. I'm not really bothered by it, if whichever one it is. Even if I had none, I don't really care. Now on the back, we have a black spoiler on the trunk lid, which we had a body colored one before. We still have M240i badging and X-Drive badging in cerium gray. I've got my 50 years of M license plate frame, and we've got the 50 years of M uh, Rondo at the back. The car has not yet been washed, so I apologize for that. And down here, we have the freeform exhaust in black chrome, which was pretty well the same as last time. Now, a couple little things here. So with uh, the M Sport Pro package, in 2022 is supposed to come with m seat belts well in 2023 it doesn't so that's kind of i wish i had it <laughs> and also um let's take a look at inside the trunk here so look at this something i noticed and this is only because uh i had a chance to see this already so let me just open the trunk here okay so with the trunk open a couple of small details here so we have run one net on this side we used to have a net on this side. I have one grocery bag hanger here. Now I have a little plug where a grocery bag hanger once was. And there used to be a 12 volt plug here. There's no longer a 12 volt plug. So, I mean, it's not really a big deal and nobody would ever notice unless you had a 2022 and a 2023, but I noticed. But one thing else that I noticed is because I've seen the M2, this is exactly how the trunk layout is in the M2. So I'm wondering if they've streamlined the design because they're using the same trunk area materials as they do in the M2. That's just my guess, but uh, it seems plausible. All right, now what I wanna do next is let me open the door and show you guys 
what this is all about. So this is iDrive 8. A lot of you don't like it. A lot of you do like it. Uh, it's another talking point when it comes to these cars. But I just wanted to point out a few small little details. So I did get the M illuminated highlighters once again. Um, I like that option. We have the aluminum M door sill down here. But I got black Sensatec perforated uh, interior this time. So I don't have any cool piping or... I mean, the contrast stitching is okay, but it's not the same as the Vernasca seats. Which means I also lose the storage pocket and I also lose the drift knee pad. So I guess I will not be going as sideways. Just joking, I will be going as sideways. Now, we also just want to show you this. There's no pocket on the back of the seat. And the back seating area is pretty well the same as last time, but just the seats look a little bit different because they're Sensatec instead of Vernasca leather. And of course, uh, you can't smell it on the video, but it doesn't smell like leather in here as it should not. Now, we also have, let me just get in here and shut the door. So, we have iDrive 8. We have head-up display. I don't have universal garage door opener. So I stole this thing back from my wife because we don't have one in the car, which is okay. I can live with that. I've already put 281 kilometers on the car. Whoops. And look at this. So we have the aluminum rhombicle trim in here. Last time I had the aluminum tetragon trim. As long as it's not high gloss black, I'm okay with it. However, we've got this new style shifter. I do honestly prefer the old style shifter just because you can shift from it in manual mode now you can only shift from the paddles which i guess it's fine but uh, it's just a small little nitpick that i only i would realize because i've had both cars and uh another little nitpick is so with iDrive 8 we get a new set of ambient interior colors my favorite one in the last one was lilac simply because the color of the car is purple there's no longer a purple option. So right now I'm on like flamingo or something, which is like pink, which is kind of the closest color to like a, a purplish color. Now the glove box is the same, but now I've gained these M illuminated highlighter, uh, illuminated uh, dash M colors, which is a cool addition. I like that. And if I open this up, so I still have a communication pad, but I no longer have a wireless charger, which I'm 100% okay with. The wireless charger is a $300 option. Uh, it charges so slow, I don't think it's really worth it, to be honest. Now, iDrive 8. So, climate controls are in the screen. There are no longer physical climate controls. However, we do have a temperature sensor, volume knob. I still like that the volume knob stays uh, stagnant when you turn it. It still says volume facing up. We've got skip track back and forth, four-way flashers, max front defrost and rear defrost. But man, I really prefer physical climate controls. But I'll tell you after using this for a little bit, uh, this is actually fine. It's very responsive. It's very easy to use. It hasn't really come up as an issue yet. But I will tell you one thing. In iDrive 7, you could use uh, climate control rules to automate the heated steering wheel and the heated seat. This is no longer an option in iDrive 8, and I've only discovered that now because I have iDrive 8 in the car. Now, another thing I want to show you guys, so let me just turn on the car. So, yes, we have a Thunder Knight metallic car in the image, which is cool. And another thing that I want to show you, and I'm just going to get the live vehicle screen on here so look at this there's a screen here called live vehicle and with adaptive con uh, content in comfort mode so this is the dash in comfort mode so you've got your speedometer I've got, I love the little M colors there uh, you've got some indicators here fuel gauge time uh, speed limit uh, who, who's put on their seatbelt in the car and at the bottom there outside temperature oil temp and you've got your tack on the other side now when you're in comfort, you see this screen. And what's cool is, if I brake, the car in the picture brakes. If I signal, the car in the picture signals. So that's kind of cool. And when the car is rolling, you see the wheels moving. Now this car actually has 
792 M wheels in bi colors, so that is not exact. And it has the wrong style antenna for the 2023. And I think the, the trunk lid spoiler is body colored, but um, the back has the, actually it has the wrong rondels. Anyways, not a big deal. So there's that, but watch this. So while I'm in the comfort mode, if I press this button on the steering wheel, so this now will allow me to change my views. So from here, if I go to reduced, I like that it has the little M logo and it just has the speedometer in the center, but uh, I could also go to uh, trip data and the BC button now, before it used to show uh, average fuel consumption, real-time fuel consumption, trip, uh, trip computer odometer, um, horsepower and torque, g-force meter, what music you're listening to. But now when I press the BC button, which I'll press now, it just changes what type of trip data information you want. So the function of this button has kind of changed. So I like to leave it on since refuel, which I've already been doing awful on. But I'm going to just press the button on the string wheel again. So I can show you we've also got uh, route preview so if you're navigating somewhere it'll, it'll tell you turn by turn what's coming up uh, you can see the map view which is kind of like the default for iDrive 7 in the center and then we have a G meter view which is a little bit more uh, in depth than the previous G meter view and then we have what you're listening to so uh, that's a little bit different than last time uh, there are more options of what you can have placed in here which is good but one complaint I have is before you could see this information, so your trip computer information, so it's telling you your real-time fuel consumption, average fuel consumption, but you could have that on the screen at the side while having the map view. So now, what they've done is they allow you to put the map view kind of in your head-up display. So there's a directional view, so if I navigate somewhere, it'll show me some navigation directions there. And I will say, if you use the BMW maps, uh, the map uh, in the head-up display is actually much better, better resolution, a little bit more options there in terms of what's being shown there than iDrive 7. But uh, you can't have everything configured the way that you did have it in iDrive 7. Now there's also the sports display, so it's basically like a shift indicator light as far as I've been able to tell. Uh, and then there's also this reduced view if you just want less information there in a smaller box. But now here's the next cool thing. So if I am on comfort mode, I can go to the focused kind of sportier view where it's a little bit tighter and then you've got your speedometer on the outside unless you put it on the reduced view like this, hold on. I just want to show you guys like that. I like to have this information though, so I can kind of try and save my fuel economy, but there's also the wide view. And then there's also this kind of just your speedometer view if you're not really too worried about your RPM. So I personally like it on the wider view for comfort, but now let's go to sport. So when we go to sport, so it changes the screen to this red color. It gives you the more focused view and I like that. But uh, I'm going to just, for this, I actually like to have the um, directional view because if you are going fast with this view, uh, the shift indicator light will show up on the screen if you're getting close to where you should shift. So in the sport view, you do not have the option to change the view. Um, so that's a little bit different. Now, if I go to Eco Pro, it goes into the wider view, it goes into this blue screen, and then we have some of the same options uh, to make adjustments, just like we did in the comfort mode view, but you can't go to the speedometer only view for whatever reason. So that's a little bit different. Um, I don't know what I think about it. It looks cool. I mean, I think I was just so used to iDrive 7 that uh, it all made sense. Um, but here's another thing I wanted to show you. So with that adaptive live view, so if we're on comfort mode, okay, it also takes a long time to get off of the screen, which is, I wish there was a way we could reduce that time, but it did the same thing in iDrive 7, so I'm not going to complain. So on the uh, live view adaptive content on comfort mode, it shows you your trip computer and how long you've coasted for or how many kilometers you've coasted for. But if I go to sport, it instantly goes to the sports displays. So you can see your horsepower, torque, G-force meter, and engine boost all in one place. Come on, see this part takes so long. 
So we've got torque, horsepower, boost, and temp. So that is cool. And then if I go to Eco, it goes to the driving style analysis. So it's really cool that they integrated all of these things into one menu called the live menu with adaptive content so that it changes with your mode. But I will tell you this, so let me just hit home. So this is the home screen on iDrive 8. And if I go over here, we've got these beautiful large widgets. Um, but here's the problem. And it's not really a big problem unless you're a big BMW nerd like I am. In iDrive 7, so I'd have my main screen that had a map preview. But on my second screen, I had a little thing so you could make the widget smaller. So I had a widget for sports displays and then uh, uh, driving style analysis. And then I had directional preview so that I could have the information of how I'm doing with... Uh, uh, driving style analysis, but also trying to see how much horsepower torque I'm using So I would try to just keep it under 200 to try to improve my fuel economy Also, the driving style analysis is graded up to 10 now instead of 5 I have actually managed to get to 10 on both um, But I've also done a lot of practicing in terms of trying to get the best fuel consumption in the vehicle So I've got some experience with that. So it's obviously to my advantage, but for anybody else it might be a little bit difficult um, So that's a little bit different now another thing that's a little bit different is this so if you've watched my video on sprint mode so if you press and hold the left paddle which i don't think any of this is going to work because i'm not in drive but if i press and hold the left paddle while i'm moving it will say sprint on the screen it will put me into the lowest gear uh, available and it'll put me into sport plus in iDrive 7 when you did this the screen would turn red to show you you're in sport plus in iDrive 8 it says sprint at the bottom, but the screen stays the same. So I'm like, am I in Sport Plus? Now, by feel and sound, yes, definitely I'm in Sport Plus. But the screen used to change. It doesn't do that anymore. So to me, I'm kind of like, why? Why doesn't it do that? And my last tiny gripe about the screen. So I recently updated my dash in iDrive 7 so it would get the M font and then it would say M240i at the top. Now that I've upgraded to iDrive 8, I'm back to the classic font instead of the M font that I've seen in the M3, which looked fantastic. And um, it doesn't say M240i anywhere. Now again, I could change my view so it has an M there, but it's not the same as saying M240i, and I started getting used to that cool M font, and now I'm back to the old font. So, small things there. Um, what else can I tell you about this? So, shifter, yep, we know about that. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the ambient colors and such that we can choose here. So, all right, so I'm in the ambient lighting. And I've started to use some of the shortcuts because we no longer have the physical uh, programmable memory buttons. So we've got ivory, citrine, coral, flamingo, pearl, turquoise, emerald, rose, and azure. But we don't have lilac or any type of purple color. So I guess I'm just going to stay on flamingo for now. I don't know. We might change that up. But overall, other than that, I mean... The car drives just as well as it ever did. Now there's another thing that I wanted to test out and I haven't really had a ch chance to test it yet, but uh, so with M Sport Pro, uh, as, as far as I've read in BMW's Technopedia, there should be more pumped in audio in here, so it should sound more sporty in here, but I don't know if I really sound, uh, hear a difference. I think I'm trying to hear it too much that I'm actually making myself hear something that might not actually be here. But uh, those are some of the small changes in the car. And if you guys want me to do a full tour of iDrive 8 on the 240, I can definitely do that. And I will say, iDrive 8, it works great. The navigation system in here is great. Um, I'm not really opposed to how it looks on the dash. Uh, the graphics themselves are improved over iDrive 7. But I know what you guys mean. It doesn't have the traditional look of what you'd see inside of a car. Um, it does look a little bit different. But I mean, I understand what BMW is trying to do. Now, if you guys ask me, do I prefer iDrive 7 or iDrive 8? Uh, I'm neither here nor there. But uh, if you're just to say, 
If I could get like some of these graphics in an iDrive 7 layout, I would be good with that. And if I could get more customization here, I mean, they've added more things you can do, but they've made it so you can't do as many things as you could, but you can do more other things, <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, guys, so this is the new car. I'll have it for at least a year. And we'll see what comes next. Um, honestly, I was thinking between this, the new M340i, I thought that would be pretty cool because it's an LCI. I haven't had a 3 Series before, so I could make some uh, content on what I think of the differences. But I honestly was just not ready to stop driving the 2 Series. Like, it just... It looks so good like I'm I like the 3 series LCI I like the 3 series pre LCI but I like this better than both of them so I kind of was leaning more towards another 240 and here I am I'm back representing this specific model and uh, I'll, I'm going to be try to become an ambassador also for uh, this Thunder Knight metallic paint which I think looks fantastic it's one of the best colors especially on this model um, I'm happy to see it trickle over to the Z4 but I'm also not happy because I don't want it to become less and less exclusive but I think it takes a certain type of person to want to drive a purple car well I don't know what better way to conclude a video other than doing an exhaust note test so let's do it i'm gonna just get it started up and we'll do some revs for you